number 13, learning about on base 13. Thirteen, where Andy and Chris were presenting on base thirteen, the latest and greatest features in your on base solution. As you'll see, we've got a brand new picture posted <laughs> just over the last week. Got together as a team, and Chris and Andy are doing the presentation for you. And you can see the rest of the team is back taking any kind of support calls. We've, all, we've taken the voice and. Put everybody on mute, as usual, and the screen chat box will be up and available for you to ask any questions along the way. We encourage you to ask questions and provide feedback, and because there are a lot of new features that are going to get you very excited to upgrade to OnBase 13, now is your opportunity to ask questions in the chat box provided by GoToMeeting. At the end, there will be a survey. We appreciate your feedback that provides us some content for future webinars on presenting you information that you want to learn. It helps to let if you guys let us know if we're doing a terrible job or an amazing job. Previous webinars are also available via the link provided here, and we will send you an email with that link as well. Thanks to our great marketing person. So what are we going to cover today? Today, on base 13, we're going to show you some of the new features available in on base 13. On base 13 is an exciting release because essentially they haven't created any brand new modules. They've actually just enhanced and improved the performance of all their existing modules, something that you guys have been looking for for a very long time. So we're very excited to see what had come out in OnBase 13, and that is improvements in virtually every area of OnBase. In addition, we're going to show you a little bit of a live demo. Unfortunately, a lot of the features, there's nothing um, sparkly or jazzy like a Fourth of July fireworks show, but we're going to show you some of the cool new features that you'll be able to take advantage of when you upgrade to OnBase 13. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Andy to talk about some of the new features available in OnBase 13. Thanks, Chris. Uh, OnBase 13, as Chris said, doesn't have a ton of new features. Um, and a lot of the new features and improved features are, are under the hood, uh, back-end improvements. Um, things that will make it go faster, run farther, jump higher, et cetera. Uh, the first big new feature for 13 is 64-bit database. Um, a highlight has gone through the database, updated all of the 32-bit integer values to 64-bit, which means you can hold a quadrillion documents in an on-base install. A quadrillion? How many is that, Andy? A lot. Um, for example, if you took a quadrillion pennies and stacked them up, they'd reach from the Earth to the Sun. 10 times. They represent about 60% of the U.S. national debt. Uh, it would take 50 people in a room to have a quadrillion blood cells. At the speed of light, it would take 170 years to travel a quadrillion miles in space. It's a lot. <laughs> and you, can, you can store that in your on base install. Is that cool? Uh, so the other new feature, uh, as you can see on the screen, is uh, Outlook 2013 integration along with the rest of the Office 2013 install, um, but the Outlook integration is one of Highland's really big strengths, one of their really big features in having Outlook 2013 before most people have Office 2013 even installed is a huge win. Uh, another really great new feature is uh, DKT with text. I think that's the final official name now. Um, you know, you've always had document knowledge transfer. Um, and then at the end, you have to sign in or click agree or I, you know, I state that I read this and I understand it. Well, now you can actually test and see if people did read it. So you put the paragraph about some random weasel on page 10, and if you, uh, if they don't answer that question correctly, what page did the uh, did the weasel pop out of the hole on? You know, they didn't read that. Yes, and you can set a number of uh, questions, so like let's say you had 10 questions to test the knowledge of your employee handbook, for example, that you did your DKT deployment on. If you can set the passing grade of 80%, you actually have full control over the number of questions, the types of questions, and the number correct to successfully pass that acknowledgement. So it takes it from just acknowledging the fact that they received it um, 
to making it much more understood and proving that they understood it. So it really helps with compliance. It, it takes uh, the new employee handbook to a new level of dread. It really does. Uh, the next new feature uh, is checklists for process control. Uh, I think they were beta testing this for a while uh, in the months leading up to 13. Uh, they brought it out now. It's actually integrated within WorkView. Uh, and it allows you to uh, define a process that must be followed step by step, uh, and then use OnBase to make sure that your, your process users are actually performing the steps in the process consistently and, and with measurable results. Uh, another feature is cloud-based document signing. Uh, this is good for the financial services industry. Uh, it means you can take a document that needs a signature, uh, you can send it to one of the two cloud-based signing providers that Highland is working with, DocuSign and CIC. Uh, you can send it up to their server, and someone else elsewhere who needs to sign it can sign it just by logging into that web service, sign the document, hit submit, and it goes back to your on-base install with a fresh, wet signature applied. It's actually a really cool feature. Uh, another new feature for this install is uh, workflow approval management. It allows you to, uh, to manage, your, manage your, your workflow approval processes uh, with a little less headache, a little less overhead. There's a little more uh, point and click configuration to uh, complex approvals. So like for example, you've got an invoice approval process that you go through and have uh, levels of management maybe um, depending on the size of the invoice. So if up to $5,000 invoices, your direct manager can approve those. Um, that first level can be assigned. You can also then, for amounts greater than $5,000, assign a secondary level manager. Um, and if that person's on vacation, they also give you the flexibility to adjust who that approver is. So that's all built-in functionality um, within the new workflow approval management. So again, it's an enhancement to the existing workflow engine. Come on, let's do it. There you go. All right, uh, another new feature, Intelligent Capture for AP. Uh, it's pretty basic. Uh, captures headers, uh, headers and footers on uh, AP documents. It leverages the new uh, advanced capture system that uh, Highland's been working on for the last couple of years. Uh, and adding to that is the data capture server, which is essentially the uh, the old barcode recognition server that everybody loves to hate uh, on steroids. So your full page OCR, your intelligent capture, your advanced capture, barcode recognition is all wrapped up into data capture server, which means it's great news for people who actually use this, this stuff because you can now drop all of this on one box, one giant eight core box, and have all of your heavy all of your heavy data lifting done in one place. Last but not least, uh, Highland released the field insurance field adjuster app for Windows 8 and Windows RT. Um, that it's a really great app for that specific vertical of insurance field adjusters. When you're out in the field and you've got to make you've got to head to 16 claims today, uh, it has things like automatic uh, claim notification, built-in driving directions, um, photo upload from the tablet. It's really really nice for, uh, for field adjusters using Windows 8. What is it used to find directions? Well, what else does it use to find directions on Windows 8? Big maps. Ding. So we've got a whole bunch of improved features in, in 13. The Probably the biggest one that everyone's going to be excited about are Unity Forms, which now have enhanced uh, document signing capabilities. Uh, allow you to attach files to the forms and give you a drawing control with markup where you can actually draw on an image control in a Unity form. And that, that marked up image will be saved with the form. Uh, that's a big one. All of the mobile clients have been touched in this release. They've all been updated. Pretty much all of them can do the same things now, finally. We've got feature parity across all the mobile clients. Uh, that includes iPad, iPhone, Windows Phone, Android Tablet, and Android Phone. App Enabler has received a huge update in this uh, in this release. It can now enable 64-bit apps, finally. It's got another cool feature called uh, 
it, uh, what do they call it? Adaptive context makes it a lot easier for your end users to use App Enabler in your uh, lot of business apps. Advanced Capture got some updates. Uh, not as many as we thought it would, but it got some updates. The CAD integration has gotten a lot of updates, actually, and OnBase is now a, a very powerful uh, CAD file management system with the new uh, CAD Unity Viewer uh, and file compare tools that are that are integrated now. We'll talk about those in an upcoming slide. Got a lot of bug fixes. A lot of bug fixes. This is a bug fix and performance release. Just good news. If you're using 12 and you're frustrated with it, 13 is for you. The first big improvement, performance improvement is the 64-bit app server. Historically, OnBase you know, runs the .NET app under IIS in, in the core-based world, the app server. Uh, now, finally, it's a 64-bit app. It can use more than 2 gigs of RAM. Uh, it, if you're having trouble with your app server running out of RAM while it's, while it's processing large numbers of user requests, this is your release. 64-bit app server is a huge improvement. Another really big under the hood uh, improvement is concurrent license handling in the Unity module. That includes uh, Unity client, app enabler, uh, I think disconnected scanning, and one other. I don't remember which one. The license handling has been improved to uh, a five, it's, it's a hard five minute timeout now for concurrent licenses in these apps. Which you say, well, great, so now I'm going to do something and then it's going to log me out. No, it's not. You'll stay logged into the program. So, for example, if you fire up, uh, if you log into your workstation, and it automatically fires up Unity Client with the VPD listener, right, for virtual print driver. Uh, Unity Client logs in, consumes a concurrent license, then you don't do anything. You go and get a cup of coffee. You go and have a chat with your with your boss. Fifteen minutes later, you come back to your desk. The Unity Client has automatically released that license after five minutes of inactivity. But then you have to go print something, use virtual print driver. So you just do it. Unity client automatically picks up that concurrent license again. If it can't find it, it just does it anyway. It gives you a little notification that, hey, by the way, you're out of concurrent licenses. I'll keep working since you were already logged in. But you should probably get some more concurrent licenses, BT dubs. Uh, so that's a really great, it's a really great, really elegant solution to the uh, to the concurrent license issue uh, that we had earlier. Uh, Windows authentication has been improved for all core-based apps. Um, where previously, if you were using Windows authentication for, say, disconnected scanning, it's a great example they use. Running everything through uh, anonymous authentication, uh, you could, what did they say? They, they could take 250 documents and scan them in and upload them through uh, disconnected scanning through anonymous authentication all the way through. Uh, that, that Authentication in 13, that same process now takes 48 seconds. So just addition of two seconds, not even 5% additional time overhead to, right, it's 2%, 5%, time overhead for Windows authentication. So now you can have end-to-end -end single sign-on. You know, you can log into OnBase when you log into your workstation, and you don't get any performance hit with it now, which is wonderful. But again, not really a flash new feature. Great for admins, great for end users. There's nothing we can really show you. Hey, look, it's faster. Same thing with web server performance. It's been increased quite a bit. Again, 64-bit app server, 64-bit web server. Uh, image file rendering, uh, keyword processing, both significantly improved. Um, Unity clients faster now. It uh, uses a lot less memory. For any of our customers running Unity Client over Citrix, hey, you can log in more than five people to a Citrix box now. It doesn't 
that uh, consume all of your RAM. Yay! Uh, along with the Unity client, this is something really interesting. Um, Highland is going to be pushing this out to all uh, core-based systems eventually. Right now, it's just the 13 Unity clients uh, can use the optimized service pipeline, which takes the, the old SOAP-based XML data transfer that happens between the Unity client and the app server and turns it into a binary data stream. It uses 70% less network traffic to do the same stuff. So it makes the Unity client suddenly actually usable over a WAN connection, like a real WAN connection, 3G, 4G, Wi-Fi. You can use Unity now. Uh, why, why even bother with Citrix if you're just deploying it for on base? You can just use a Unity client for your remote workers now with the, with the increased speed from the optimized service pipeline. And eventually that will be coming to all of the core base products. So disconnected scanning, web client, they'll all be getting this. Uh, this in core base workflow, they'll all be getting this uh, improved optimized service pipeline, which will be excellent. So in case you haven't noticed, there's been a lot of enhancements to the um, on-base product offering, including some additional solution sets built on existing core on-base modules. So there aren't a lot of new modules. There are tons of new enhancements and features added to the existing modules. And as Andy pointed out over the last four or five items listed in here, all performance-based improvements, which is a fantastic achievement for Highland to go through their product offerings and make sure that they are all optimized to perform to your expectations. Um, and if you're questioning whether or not you know, there's enough changes in it for you personally, um, we can produce, you can contact support, and we will get you a what's called a Delta report. That Delta report will give you, for your modules only, all the changes from your current on-base version to the current 13 version available from Highland. So you'll get to see every single feature that has been added and changed or fixed or enhanced from those versions, from your current version to that version, which I encourage you, if you're on the fence, if after watching this presentation you are just itching to get to OnBase 13, take a look at your Delta report and that will be further proof of all the changes that would entice you to take the time to upgrade your system. Absolutely. It's a, it's a great resource. Uh, you know, if you're still Coming along on on base seven, the, your your Delta report will be very long. If you're on on base twelve, not quite so long, but still significant. Um, one last thing before we switch uh, to the next slide is the web client ActiveX controls size. The total size has been reduced by half, by half, and they've gotten it down to a single download. So when you log in, it downloads the controls once. You don't have to click a million pop-ups and a million status bars to get the ActiveX controls to work. Finally, it's good news, folks. So next, we're going to go. We're going to walk through some of the new features uh, that are really, really interesting. Uh, and again, with 13, it's mostly performance enhancements and bug fixes. So there aren't a ton of new features, and we'll get to the improved features after we go through these these new features. Um, the first one, the biggest one, is probably Outlook 2013 and the rest of the Office 2013 suite. Uh, once again, we've got OnBase integrated into the ribbon. Um, it's, a, it's a fantastic client. Everybody who knows and uses the, uh, the Outlook client, it's a terrific, powerful tool. Workflow, document upload, form creation, full document retrieval from within Outlook. You don't even have to learn a new interface. DKT with tests. This shows uh, show, just shows setting up a, uh, a new test, a new question. Um, so we've got a survey question we're setting up. You can make it a true/false, multiple choice, uh, multiple select, which is actually you know check boxes, uh, or an essay if you really want to read what your users really think about your new <laughs> your new employee handbook. They can tell you. Uh, DKT with tests is going to be a great great new addition. Uh, if you're looking for additional compliance in your journal documentation. In our test, Andy's essay answer was eight pages long. I wanted to be, you know, they said keep it concise, you know, I, I figured I'd err on the side of being <laughs> thorough. <laughs> uh, checklist for process control, this is a, a view of the, uh, the manager view of process control where you can see this guy's got uh, a whole bunch of people doing processes over on the right side, and you can see if you're examining it, individual processes in the middle here, and how.
how many of these processes are hitting compliance and how many people are, are being lazy and not checking their checkboxes or not, or worse, not checking their, uh, their processes at all. Uh, Intelligent Capture for AP has got a nice interface. Uh, you can set up your various forms here. Yeah, like I said, not a lot of new features. A lot of improvements. A lot of improvements. We're going to go through these improved features. There's a lot of things here to get excited about, actually. First and foremost, uh, there's a lot of improvements to the Unity forms. And one of the biggest features, along with these improved Unity form features, is that all of these new features for Unity forms work on mobile. And I mean all of mobile. We've got a screen cap of an iPad running a Unity form with the new features here. But this works on everything mobile, Android phone, Windows phone, iOS, you know, both iPhone and iPad. Uh, we'll go through the features here in just a sec, uh, like the drawing control. The, uh, the drawing control is a big one. So you could always add an image to a Unity form, but it was just an image. Yay, a picture. Now you can add an image to a Unity form that your users, your form users, can mark up. They can write down what areas of their car got smashed in the accident. They can circle what parts of their bodies hurt while they're filling out their clinical form. This is a huge deal. This control gets saved. All the changes get saved with the form when it is submitted. You can pull it up again in on base. Terrific feature. Uh, Unity form signature pads. Um, they're cool. They work really well. There's a lot of tech behind them. Um, but they're kind of clunky and mobile. In this case now, when you tap, when you have a, a Unity form on a mobile device and you tap the signature pad, you now get a nice light box with a big zoomed in signature pad. You can sign away with your finger and, uh, and save your signature on, the, on a nice big signature pad, which is incredibly useful for signing documents on mobile. This is probably the most requested feature since Unity forms were created attaching files to a Unity form. It finally works. It's here. Yay! Uh, you can attach multiple files. Uh, you, you get a control. Now you can add to your Unity form. It supports multiple attachments. They can just be files. In this case, this example shows a JPEG image that's attached to this form. So like uh, field adjuster adding accident photos to a, to a, a claim stuff like that. Your example this morning, Chris, was um, receipts. Yeah. Right? So a lot of you have expense reports that yeah. you use on base for. It's a very simple process. You can actually attach your receipts while filling out your form. So it's a fantastic interface that allows you, now, and as Andy kind of pointed out, attaching photos. So not only can you upload an attachment on your, say you're doing this from your PC, you can click on the attachment, you can attach your multiple receipts. If you have multiple receipts, all in one easy step before submitting the form. If you have, are doing it from your iPad, you can do Unity forms from your iPad, and you take some pictures of receipts while you're at the restaurant, you get your receipt back from the waitress, signed with the tip and all that good stuff, you take a picture with your iPad, you submit your expense report directly from the restaurant before you even leave with your iPad, and it's submitted that quickly. It's truly taking that next step in functionality by allowing you to attach any kind of document to this. Like in the example on the screen, you can tell that in this case it's attaching a police report to an accident um, unity form, where it also has a drawing tool where you can show and draw in what damage occurred, where did some skid marks maybe end, end up. So it gives you full functionality to capture as much information as possible on the front end. Absolutely. The expense reports are really important because you know you don't want you don't want your uh, your sales guide in the field of uh, you know, getting a little carried away at, uh, at the sales pitch dinner and then forgetting, completely forgetting to submit their expense report. They can do it right there in the restaurant, be that guy with their iPad taking the picture of the receipt. Now you can do it. Brought to you by OnBase 13. Some other excellent features. Uh, as Chris mentioned, photo upload from mobile. Uh, this works. We've got the, showing the interface here for the iPhone and Android phone. Uh, you can take a picture live, or you can choose a picture from your camera roll or your saved pictures on Android. Uh, this works on tablets as well. 
You can, you can upload these pictures straight into OnBase. You can attach them to a Unity form. That's a fantastic new feature. Very useful. Got a few more features to, to go over here. Uh, we now support Windows Phone 8 in addition to Windows Phone 7.5, so that's a, that's a big plus. Um, device registration. There isn't really a, a flashy way to show this, so I got shoved onto this last slide here, but this is a big feature because now your end users can register their devices if you allow them, allow centralized administration of your mobile devices through the mobile broker as well as deactivation of anything, any devices that are lost or stolen or, you know, employees get kicked out, like, no, don't quit bringing your iPad to work, etc. It's a really, really great feature. And we've got it now in 13. So the next new feature uh, that probably everybody's going to get behind is uh, adaptive context in application enabler. Beyond it being able to support 64-bit apps now, this is probably the other biggest feature that, that AE does now. In the past, when you wanted, let's say you had this enabled application, uh, and you've got three areas, two, three pieces of data that you want to capture and, and uh, say, build, build a form from one, uh, upload a document from another, you know what I mean. Each one of these hotspots you'd have to configure with a different, uh, a different key combo. You have a double click for your orange box, an F6 for the for the green outline box, or and they, you know once you run out of function keys in a really large enabled app, you know you get you start to get creative with like Control Alt Shift B, whatever. Your users have to remember these arcane uh, and completely undocumented key combos. Now with adaptive context, you can make it a double click for all of these. They just have to remember where on the screen to double click. You can make it an F6 for all of these if you want. It's a fantastic new feature. It makes it way, way easier for your end users to use an enabled application. And again, that means you can utilize OnBase without your end users having to worry about any kind of new interface. Just say, okay, so we've got this new system in place. Just double click this spot if you want to make a new e-form for this, or double click this spot if you want to upload a document. And this will require you to update your existing XML, so all of you that have it with those function keys and your post-it notes on the monitor telling you what the F6 does versus the F8 versus the Control-Alt-B. Um, so those post-it notes would come down, you'd update the XML and deploy it to all the clients, and hopefully you've done it through click once. That makes it very easy to deploy that new XML file. And then they'd be able to only have to do a double click and remember where on the screen they are double clicking to do what action. So it is a fantastic new feature within Application Enabler. Big win for usability. Next new uh, new feature for, for App Enabler uh, is the Migration Wizard. So let you really simply take your, you know, you build a great, a great enabled app in test. You get it working, it's retrieving documents, it's finding the data correctly, well, now you have to go and do exactly the same steps in prod. Well, not anymore. You can take the migration wizard, move your XML file from test to prod really simply. It's going to make things a lot easier for, uh, for developing and testing enabled applications. More importantly, making sure that you do test your application enabler prior to deploying in production. Because I know some of you have been naughty and done it directly in production. It's 10 a.m. Do you know where your test server is? <laughs> All right, and the Unity client has had a ton of improvements, along with the performance improvements that we mentioned earlier. Uh, we've got a lot of user interface and usability improvements in Unity. Uh, the first one that the Highland's really pushing is the personal page. If you ever use the personal page, you know that this looks a little alien with uh, different colors and weird titles to all the tiles. Um, that's because they've now added the ability to change the colors of your tiles and the ability to rename your tiles. Uh, which is actually kind of nice if you've got, you know, a few cues that are maybe a little generically named. Uh, you can rename them. Like, I don't want Word document queue. I want it to say My Daily Case Files. So you can rename it. There it is. My Daily Case Files. Much better. You can do all of this with one click, too. Uh, if you just hit the, uh, the, little, the new little gear icon on each on your tile, you can make all of your changes all at once. So here we're going to change the color of this to red, and we're going to change the name of it on their search and give it a description, and there we go. So in the case, 
Why do my, this might be valuable to you is you probably wear more than a single hat. Many of you out there are on-base admins, you're a manager role, and you also have daily tasks that you have to complete. So you could group these and color them based on the role or hat that you're wearing at that moment. So for example, if you have managerial um, responsibilities and you're in charge of some benefits, you get benefits in this case, the managerial role could be green, red could be for any of your HR functions that you have to do as a manager, and then you can have your daily tasks like the My Reading Group be in that golden yellowish color. Uh, so it truly gives you more flexibility in arranging your personal page to be useful to you and all the tasks that you have to complete in any given day. Absolutely. Another big improvement for 13 Community Client is the ability to sign PDF documents. And you can sign them with a signature pad, you can sign them with your mouse, uh, you can add in a signature from a Adobe PDF form, slap it in, sign it correctly. It's great to sign PDFs and sign Unity. You used to be able to sign just image documents. And so I kind of cleverly actually took PDF documents, they turned them into image documents, and then they let you use either an existing signature, drag and drop, or you can use a mouse and do a sign every time. And then it takes that image, burns it in, and then turns it back to a PDF and saves it. So it was a rather clever way to get that functionality added into PDFs regardless of the type of PDF that you are using. It does require the signature pad interface license and the PDF framework license, just so you know. FYI. Uh, we've got some feature parity uh, for Unity Client, which means, finally, features that should have been there are there now, such as batch scanning. They've changed the interface. It looks a lot more familiar to anyone who's done uh, large amounts of scanning in the thick client. Uh, this, is, this is what it looks like now in Unity. Yay! Finally! Highland spoke, or you spoke and Highland listened, actually, in this particular case. The only feature that isn't here that I know a lot of you are looking for is in the um, Unity interface, you still cannot commit batches like, with the right click. So you'll see the awaiting commit queue available there. Um, unfortunately, you can't commit through there. So either you need to use a thick client or you need to set up a scheduled process like most of you already have to do a scheduled commit. We've also got uh, the type ahead indexing if you've got advanced capture. Uh, it'll OCR. You know, it, you define the area that you're that you are uh, indexing. Type, start typing it in. It'll figure out. Oh, that's what you're looking for. Pop it in there in the uh, the yellow box underneath, just like you would like. You know, Google Instant Search. Yay! Finally, this is the big one though. Uh, reverse autofill key sets. Finally, in Unity client. So if you've got a vendor list set up and you need to, you can't remember the name of that vendor, but you've got their vendor number or vice versa, reverse key set lookup, finally. A whole bunch of other features that they've added to the uh, Unity, on-base Unity client in 13. Uh, you can append, finally, you can append uploads to an existing document. You don't always have to create a new document with the uh, document upload. Um, you can change the file type during upload. It won't erase all of your other settings. Yes. If you accidentally, you know, you set it to image file, you set in all your index values, then you realize you're double clicking on a PDF. You go back to change it to a PDF file and it cleared out all of your other information, all of your index file settings. It doesn't anymore. Yeah, finally. You can also change the file type if you have an upload tile on your personal page. So that's another win. Uh, they've added some batch indexing functionality, uh, QA to batch indexing. Finally, you can mark for rescan and uh, have some basic QA functionality now in batch indexing in the Unity client, which is good. That's another feature that you can you can finally deploy Unity if you're waiting for this feature. Uh, they've also got some scan queue sweep options. I think they're now they now mirror what you find in the thick client in uh, directory sweep. All right, so additional improved features. Uh, the iPad client, mobile client on iPad, can now read offline, offline files. This is, a big, this is a big plus for anybody who's uh, you know, got some mobile workforce. Um, they've got intermittent connection to a Wi-Fi network or something. They're using an iPad. Um, you've got some things that regularly need to go out to them. Um, you, can, you can route them through workflow. 
to be downloaded to the iPads when, before they go offline. Uh, users can also pull documents offline manually on their iPad if they know they're about to like step on a plane or something, and they really need to review this last PO. And I see that used for larger documents. That example had invoices. A single page invoice you probably wouldn't want to take offline and review because you would probably review it rather quickly. But that employee handbook that Andy loves so much that <laughs> we referenced earlier, and or if you've got a project review or a project plan review or anything larger that while you're going to be offline or going home at night and you want to take a look at that during quiet time, um, this provides you that perfect interface to do that. And you, like Andy mentioned, you could do it via workflow action. So if you're a workflow administrator and you got something in the queue for somebody to review and they want to be able to take it offline, you can create that action to do so. Or through the custom query search, directly from the iPad, they can choose what documents to bring offline and carry home with them and then, of course, come back and do their approvals or actions that, from there. There's nothing I would rather want. Uh, there's nothing I'd rather do than uh, read the employee handbook on my iPad in bed. It's been proven to cure narcolepsy. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so I mentioned earlier the CAD integrations. I know we don't have a ton of customers on CAD, but this is pretty significant. Um, there's there's now a Unity CAD viewer, uh, and it's very powerful. Uh, supports about 300 file formats, not just CAD format. There's uh, you know Autodesk, Inventor. Um, AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Word, and PDF files as well. There's a compare function in here that actually would let you uh, compare two Word documents, and you can see changes between the two. Which is good if you're doing uh, engineering proposals and something has changed. You're sure something has changed, but you're not sure what. Um, and of course, you can compare CAD files as well. So you know why why is this bolt missing, or why is it a different thread thread depth than before? Oh, it's not. Pull up the compare with your previous revision. Oh yeah, it is right there, highlighted in blue. That is different. Uh, new in 13, this now includes markup, so you can actually put put in text and lines and uh, freeform drawings into your CAD files and mark them up. Like, no, this isn't right. Change this part. This should be plastic, not alloy, etc. Really great new innovations, especially. For anybody using, you know, the built-in document management in like Inventor, which I hear is pretty terrible, uh, OnBase works well with CAD. Works really well now with 13. Uh, and yeah, advanced capture. Oh yeah, advanced capture. Um, you can now. It's actually a pretty interesting feature. It is the only new feature that got carried over from our our pre-release party. Um, you can. Previously, you, your uh, your on-base manager or administrator had to create the advanced capture forms, the templates, uh, for, for doing the advanced capture. So you had to have a pile of documents there and lay out each template yourself, and then you could push them out to your advanced capture users. Um, now you can actually offload that to other users. You can assign that, that, um, that privilege to other user groups. So other users can uh, can change your templates in advanced capture. It's actually a pretty big, pretty big win. Definitely takes some of the pressure off of you. So, without further ado, we have a live demo, and that looks awesome on GoToWebinar. <laughs> okay, so a couple quick things I just want to show you. Um, as we've indicated, you'll notice throughout this, there's a lot of enhancements, a lot of new features, a lot of them that we can't actually demonstrate um, very efficiently because they're improvements to performance and things. But I did want to show, take a moment to show you a couple of subtle new features that you might be able to take advantage of. So for example, one simple new feature that is really nice, under users and usernames, just in regular on-base configuration, you'll notice that I can take my user, if I go under settings, which is looks a little bit different now. Very similar. You can still update the password and their email and go all those things. But there's a nice new option. Account expires after. So you can take that proactive approach to, I know Andy's going to leave today. It's his last day. So I can set this and it will expire after today. Or I can set this date sometime in the future just by using the date picker. So a subtle feature but a great way to be proactive when you have somebody that's going to be departing in the future or if you have 
um, an auditor in place and you only want to have them have access for two weeks or a temporary employee or summer help, any of those types of scenario, business scenarios are great for using this tool. Thank you for hitting cancel. I mean, I know I'm doing a terrible job at the webinar, but it's really <laughs> nice to know that I'm not locked out right away. And also, the, um, Andy mentioned this performance enhancement using authentication. So a lot of you use MT authentication today. And I'm right now in the on-base WAMCon console, or the Web Application Management console. And some of you may not have even known that this little tools toolbar up here even existed. And this is where you can modify your configuration settings within the on-base application and server and your um, app net settings, so your direct web server settings. You'll notice there's two things in here that kind of have some importance. One is impersonation. Impersonation, they used to be rather difficult because you had to go into a command line and get to a certain directory and type in all this long command string in order to encrypt the impersonation account used by your on-base web server. Now you can do it directly from here. So if I click this, I put in my domain, my user and password, or if your impersonation account password has changed, you've got a security policy that requires you to change it on a regular basis. Directly through this interface, you can do that. It's very simple to do now. So you have no excuse not to implement impersonation within your environment. Additionally, the optimized for Windows authentication. So this is, again applies to all core-based functionality. You notice it's checked. If I uncheck it, it's going to tell me that I'm going to reset it. I will. You'll notice here it's unchecked. It's kind of like the turbo button on a PC. I don't know why you would want to run slower, but so we always want to recommend leaving that checked. They'll keep, make sure all your NT authentication going through the core will happen at an optimized speed, minimizing the back and forth communications uh, for all of your core-based transactions. The last bits we want to show you actually revolve, of course, around our friend, the Unity client. As we promised, there was lots of changes in the Unity client. We've been telling you that for years, so it shouldn't be any surprise that they continue to add functionality to the Unity client. Uh, first and foremost, the on-base disk in the upper left-hand corner, for lack of a better term, the O, if you will. The application menu. Come on, get with the new terminology. Microsoft only changes it every five years. <laughs> the application menu. Those, uh, <laughs> this is where they've changed. You'll notice on our Unity client, we didn't have the Unity Forms option. So Unity Form Designer was removed and stripped from the end of there and added to the administration menu. So here's where I can do my Unity Forms designing, my records management administration, user administration. I can manage all my locks, your signature administration. It's all done through the single menu. A lot of people forget that, so they can't have that instant panic attack when they first see the screen, like, oh, I lost Designer. No, it's still here. Now they've just um, centralized it under the administration menu, kind of where you'd expect to see it. Another big, use, another big usability win. Yeah, it's a really good. And as Andy had kind of pointed out before, you'll notice on this screen we've got several different windows, um, including batch scanning on our personal page. This was our default page when we logged into Unity, so it came right into here because that's where we're going to be doing most of our work and be most useful for us. And that little gear he referred to, the configure button, here's where we can take and change our title and our screen color. We'll make this, oh, let's make it golden. And click OK, and they'll save those changes instantly. So each one of your users will have that capability to modify and personalize their page further above and beyond adding certain functionality. Also, you'll notice that you can drag more tiles than ever before in the resequencing of those tiles to make it more useful for them. So the point-and-click configuration within this Unity client has become truly user-friendly and much better uh, user interface Now, unfortunately, we can't really show you anything on the performance side, but you'll notice these windows still apply as far as the search configuration. I don't know. I don't think I have any. Look in the, at the bottom of the test documents. I should have some of there. Of course, we get the warning message indicating test uh, simple yes, yeah, simple scan documents. Andy's little test Frankenstein machine. We do have some documents. So the login performance of the on-base Unity client and the retrieval of the on-base documents are much faster and much more feature-rich than ever before. 
this isn't running on a high powered machine or anything. Not standard, a standard scanned image. You can see the user interface is a much more robust interface than ever before. And you still have all the same features along the top. Again, memory to use all of those features. And you can use your modify button to edit pages of a document. So in this case, you have multiple pages. If you wanted to split them off and create new documents, you can, all through the regular menu options. And you notice all of that timing, jumping between all of the screens. I realize through the GoToMeeting, you're seeing a small delay, but it actually is pretty instantaneous, which is the first time ever. Most people complain that there's lags in there, so their performance is down when they have to edit multiple documents or documents with many pages. That has been sharply improved in 13. That's everything we wanted to show you in the OnBase 13. So with that, there are some additional resources we want to point you to. Of course, all of you should be signed up for our OnBase blog, or our Navia blog, where we post things about OnBase and ECM in general. All of that great content provides you insights into special features and things that we come across when we are supporting you. So as you bring up issues and concerns, we find special solutions, we provide that information in the blog so that you can take advantage of those key insights and hopefully avoid any type of issue. Also the community. If you haven't already signed up for the Highland community, shame on you, because you should have, they are posting tons of great information. The OnBase 13 MRGs are out there, so you can take a look at the content in there. And again, you can contact us at support to get that Delta report, which will tell you all the on-base changes between your current on-base version and the latest on-base 13 release. For just the modules you own. Now we're going to open up to any questions. And I think we see a question pop up here. Good question. What version did the tools menu get added for the WAMCON console? That was added in 12, I believe, was the first instance that came out. And it might have been 12.01, but I would have to double check that to be sure. But it was it's a very recent feature, but it does make that impersonation adjustment uh, very easy to do. So if you haven't put an impersonation in place, which does the encryption of an account in the um, registry, so if the, your server, your web server ever got hacked, they would only be able to see network service running in IIS. They wouldn't know what account that was. If they did find that somebody in the registry is encrypted, so they would have to use a huge algorithm to unencrypt it, and they wouldn't waste the time to do that because there are plenty of open websites for them to enjoy attacking. Um, so if you haven't gone up to t at least 1201, I believe it is, um, then that's where that was first introduced. Remember, the real reason to use impersonation on your web server is that if, if there's a flaw in IIS and it gets compromised, um, that that process that's been compromised will only have access to the things that that configured user, the impersonating user, would have access to, which is great. You can lock that user down, make sure they can only get to your web server stuff. I mean, with a web server, you don't even have to give them access to the data groups. It's you know to the to the disk groups. It's a really really good feature. Everybody should be impersonating. Oh, all these great new features, and I can't believe there's not more questions. Well, if you do have more questions, you definitely know where to find us. Um, and the current releases. So this is all the current releases for your software, obviously. The OnBase 13 is what we've been talking about for the last 45 minutes, so you know all about that one. Um, if you're a user of Cofax Capture, that's up to version 10. And VRS Elite have Service Pack 1 out and available. So if you haven't updated your Cofax VRS Elite yet, we encourage you to do so. And Teleforms version 10.6 is public release. Oh, we got a new request. We are recording this webinar, and it will be available um, from the website. So that link will be out on our website and be available to you. All of our webinars are recorded and available. You can, of course, if you have further questions, don't hesitate to contact our solution support team via our 800 number or our email, support at naviant-inc.com, or you can go through our Naviant Live chat. If you haven't done so already, it's on our customer portal of the Naviant-Inc homepage. 
you'll just see the customer portal tab, and on that you'll see live support. Pop in a question there. Ask for your Delta report. Um, any simple questions, chat is a great resource to use. Especially if you're sitting in a meeting and you're a little bored and you want to get something done, use chat. What do we have coming up? Well, we've got an exciting new series starting in August. August 21st, 10 a.m., mark your calendar now, because you get to see the very first OnBase Solution Spotlight. It's going to detail out and show you all the cool features of the mobile integration and why you're going to want to use it um, and how you can leverage it in your business, provide you kind of a business solution uh, architecture to the mobile integration. So that will be hosted by Guy Schrader on August 21st, 10 a.m. Hopefully see you there. We won't be back until September. We'll see you in September for our webinar. Hopefully your surveys will provide some additional content, otherwise we're going to come up with something very cool to show you again. And please mark your calendars if you haven't already for the best conference. The Navient Leadership Summit is October 14th and 15th in the beautiful Wisconsin Dells. For those of you that last year, you had a fantastic day of learning day one. We got training classes and then a fantastic dinner where you overeat and enjoy and indulge in rich, tasty foods, and then dive into some additional content the next day and your peers and vendors, and learn all kinds of great information before heading home with some fabulous prizes. So don't miss out on the Navient Leadership Summit, October 14th and 15th. Thank you guys very much for joining us today. We appreciate you taking an hour of your day to join Navient and learning more about what OnBase can provide to you. As we just touched and highlighted some of the thousands of changes done in OnBase 13, there are plenty more to talk about. So if you have any interest in doing any upgrade or you want to get your Delta report, contact support immediately or your sales rep, and we'll get you all of the information in to get you upgraded today. We'd love to see you running 13 and take advantage of all these new performance enhancements and new features available within all the different clients that you're running. Thank you so much, and we hope you have a great day. Have a great day.